إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلاة الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for the bounty of Islam and for the bounty of the Sunnah All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah الحمد لله Allah سبحانه وتعالى He has allowed us to live to see another Ramadan and this is a tremendous opportunity for us a tremendous occasion it is incumbent and it is a must that we take full advantage of this auspicious occasion the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said in a hadith that famous hadith man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi that whoever fasts ramadan out of iman and anticipation of the reward then his previous sins they will be forgiven then his previous sins they will be forgiven alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has blessed us and given us another opportunity to take full advantage of this ni'ma of this bounty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of his noble book he says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون اياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا او على سفر فعدة من ايام اخر الله سبحانه وتعالى he says o oh, you who believe o oh, you who believe fasting has been written upon you fasting it has been written upon you as it was written upon those who came before you so that you will attain piety so that you will attain piety a days who yani who have fixed numbers a fixed number of days ayamin ma'dudat a fixed number of days and thus whoever from amongst you he is sick or upon a journey then he will make those days up later with other days then he will make up those days later with other days bidni lahi ta'ala today we would like to focus in on the statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is his statement جل وعلا فمن كان منكم مريضا او على سفر فعده من ايام اخر 
and whoever from amongst you is sick or upon a journey, then they will make it up from other days. Then they will make it up for other days. It is incumbent that we study the rules and the regulations of the religion so that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon basira. Ay, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon ilm, upon knowledge. Naam, upon knowledge. It is incumbent that we know exactly what we can and cannot do. It is incumbent and it is important that we know what are our allowances. What are our allowances? So that thus the individual, he won't, he won't put himself through any unnecessary difficulties due to the fact of his ignorance and not knowing that he has an allowance that he has an allowance now verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wants for us ease and he does not want for us difficulty as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says yuridu Allahu bikum al-yusr wa la yuridu bikum al-usr that verily Allah wants for you ease. Allah wants for you ease. And He does not want for you difficulty. He does not want for you difficulty. From the superiority of the deen of Al-Islam is that there is no difficulty placed upon those individuals who are not able to endure such and thus they are given licenses now so in the case of the of fasting fasting it is obligatory as we know it has been written upon us as it was written upon those who have come before us but with that being the case if there's an individual who is sick who is sick and we know the sickness as we'll come to see more in depth with milahi ta'ala is a situation that could turn and prove to be problematic when coupled with fasting. So the individual, if they are sick, then they are allowed to break their fast. They are allowed to break their fast. Likewise, those upon a journey, as the journeys, they become very strenuous. They become very difficult, very hard. Or at times, they could become very difficult, strenuous, and hard. So likewise, for the person who is traveling, then they are able to break their fast. And bin Allahi Ta'ala will come to see in more depth and detail as it relates to these particular affairs. But the cake, but the takeaway, right, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to each of these individuals a license to break their fast and then to make those days up with other days. To break their fast, and then to make those days up with other days uh, after Ramadan, other days in the year. قال العلامة الشيخ أحمد النجمي رحمة الله عليه he mentions commenting on the statement of Allah, of Allah سبحانه وتعالى فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر and whoever from amongst you, he is sick or upon a journey, then he will make those days up from other days. The Shaykh, he says, فَيَجُوز لِلْمَرِيضُ الْإِفْطَارِ وَالْقَضَاءِ He says, so it is permissible for the one who he is sick to break his fast, to break his fast in Ramadan, and he has to have القضاء. Meaning that he will make that day up later. يعني, the Shaykh says, يعني الإفطار بالنية القضاء فيما بعد إن عفاه الله عز وجل. Meaning that he has the intention that he's going to break his fast and he's going to eat and drink. But he has the intention that he will make the days up. He will make the days up if Allah cures him, that if Allah Azza wa Jal cures him, then he will make the days up. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cures him in the month of Ramadan, then he will fast the rest of the month of Ramadan 
after he is cured. Or she will fast the rest of the month of Ramadan after she is cured. Naam. And then they will make those days up that they missed due to not fasting, due to the sickness after Ramadan if the cure comes to them. Naam. They will make those days up after once they are cured. Naam. Likewise, the person who was upon a journey, Al Musafir, likewise for the person who was upon a journey, يجوز له أن يفطر بنية القضاء فيما بعد إذا أقام is that he has the intention that they're going to break the fast in the month of Ramadan, right? Because they are traveling, but they will intend to make to make it up, to make up those days once they have become resident, once they have stopped traveling and they have returned from their journey. Then they will make those days up after Ramadan. Naam, they will make those days up after Ramadan. So, so however many days was missed due to the journey or however many days was missed due to the sickness, then those days will be made up after Ramadan once the sickness the person has been cured from the sickness once Allah has cured the person from the sickness and once the traveler is no longer traveling and they are resident again then they will make up however many days they had missed نعم ولكن however بنسبة للمريض as relates to the person who is sick نعم الذي يبيح الفطر the one who he can fast I mean excuse me the one who he can break his fast as far as the one who is sick, the one who he's allowed to break his fast, نعم, فهو في حقيقة يختلف. Then verily, these individuals, they will, their reality will differ. These individuals, their reality, it will, it will differ, yeah. And it's important that we understand this difference so that we know in depth and detail that if we become sick in Ramadan, what are we to do? And what is best to do? Right, so as we know, not all sicknesses they are the same. Not all sicknesses are the same, and sicknesses they differ in their scope, they differ in their severity, and so on and so forth. Man, for the marid, الذي لا يستطيع the the sick or the marid for the marid, man, for the marid الذي لا يستطيع الإنسان معه صيام مرة واحدة the sickness that an individual he doesn't have the ability to fast even one time, huh? There's some sicknesses that an individual, he can't even fast one time. He can't fast at all. The sickness doesn't allow him, uh, due to its severity, doesn't allow him to what? To fast, period. He can't fast, period. Now, بِأَنْ يَكُونَ الْمَرُضْ شَدِيدًا Because the sickness is severe. It's, it's, it's very severe. So what's the case for this person? The person who, his sickness is so severe that he can't fast at all. Or she can't fast at all due to the severity of the sickness. In their case, what is the ruling? In their case, what is the ruling? The Shaykh says, in their case, فَلَا يَجُوزُ الْإِنسَانِ أَنْ يَصُومُ In their case, it is not permissible for the person to fast. You understand? In the case where a person is sick, with a sickness that is severe, with a sickness that is severe, the sickness that doesn't allow them to fast at all, meaning that if they fast, it, it becomes, yeah, it's, 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 it's dangerous for them. If they fast, it harms them. If they fast, it may increase their sickness and make them more sick. It may add complications. Now, so although technically they can withhold from food and drink, it will be to their detriment due to their sickness. Now, this is what is meant by they can't even fast at all. This doesn't mean that they physically don't have the ability to stay away from food and drink and so on and so forth, but it means that if they were to do that, then they will cause more harm to themselves. They will cause more harm to themselves and they will exacerbate the situation. So for a person like this, it is not permissible for them to fast. لا يجوز. It's not permissible. لأنه يضر نفسه. Because he will hurt himself. He will hurt himself. So due to the fact that he or she will hurt themselves, if they were to fast with such a sickness, then in their case, it is not permissible for them to fast. Okay? It is not permissible for them to fast. 
So this is the kind of sickness that we, we want to look at first. That sickness that a person is so sick that if they fast, it will end up being more harmful for, for them. So for this person, they are, are not allowed to fast. They are not allowed to fast. Ma'am, play. And as we know, not all sicknesses are like this. So what about the other types of sickness? What about the other type of sickness? The Shaykh he says, أَمَّا إِذَا كَانَ الْمَرَضْ خَفِيفًا He said, but if the sickness is light, بِحَيْثُ أَنَّهُ يَسْتُطِيعُ الصيام, is light from the standpoint that he can actually fast or she can ask, actually fast with this sickness, because it's light. وَلَكِنْ بِمَشَقَّةً <coughs> They fast, and they can fast because the sickness is light, but it will cause some discomfort. It will cause some discomfort. So, it's not to say that <coughs> if they fast, you know, it won't cause them any type of discomfort. No, they're sick, and if they fast, their, their fasting while being sick will cause them discomfort. Right? They cause them discomfort. You see? This type of person, فَيَجُوزْ لَهُ الصيام. This person, it is okay for him to fast. The Shaykh, he says, this person... It's permissible or it's permitted for him to fast. ولكن مع الكراهة But is, is hated. It's allowed for him to fast or allowed for her to fast, but it is hated. نعم, it is hated. It is hated. Because remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants for us what? Ease. He does not want for us difficulty. نعم, he wants for us ease. He does not want for us difficulty. So this person, he's sick. If he fasts, it will make it a little more harder for him. If she fasts, it will make it a little more harder for her. But it's, you know, but it's okay. It won't cause any lasting harm, but it make it a little more difficult. So this person is permitted for them to fast, but it is hated. It is hated. Now, وينبغي له أن يفطر إذا كان يشق عليه. However, this person, if he's fasting and it's a little, and she or she's fasting and it's a little difficult for them, نعم. So it's okay and they start fasting, right? But the Sheikh he mentions he says, but however, if it becomes extremely difficult, if it becomes extremely difficult, then at that point they have to break their fast. Okay, so the person, you know, felt he was a little bit sick or she felt a little bit sick and they chose to fast, even though yani, it was hated, but they chose to fast because they're permitted to fast and they started their day. But then as the day went on, they realized that it, it's, it's, it's more than they had anticipated and it's very difficult for them, extremely difficult for them to continue to fast. And they see their situation in decline because they're fasting. Then at this point. They have, to, they have to break their fast. Okay, at this point, if they find that it is becoming extremely difficult for them, they must break their fast. They have to break their fast. Okay, and it's very important that that that, that we know this. The Sheikh he goes on and he mentions he brings another element to it. He says, "وَإِذَا قَرَّرَ طَبِيبٌ أَوْ طَبِيبَانٌ مُسْلِمَانٌ أَنَّ الصَّوْمَ يزيد المرض فإنه يجب عليه أن يفطر. He said, but, but, it's another element to it. Because a person, he or she may think, I can do it. He or she may feel they can do it, right? The Shaykh, he says, but if, a, if, if one or two Muslim doctors, if one or two Muslim doctors who are trusted, tell this person, that fasting will increase their sickness if one or two Muslim doctors. Now, this is this is regardless how the person feels, regardless how they feel. They can feel, oh, I can do it, regardless what they feel like. If one or two Muslim doctors who are trusted tell them that fasting will increase their sickness and make their sickness worse, then in this case, they have to, they must Break their fast. They must break their fast. And they must eat and drink and not fast. 
Okay? Regardless of how they feel, even though they feel they can do it, if one or two doctors say no, Muslim doctors who are trustworthy say no, this will increase your sickness. This this will be a detriment for you right now uh, until you get better. They are not allowed to fast. They can't fast. They must. They must eat. They must eat and take their medicine. They must eat and take their medicine. Okay. The Sheikh he says, "Wahu nak sual." He said, "But now there's a question. Now there's a question, All right?" The Sheikh of Allah Taala he mentions. He says, "Hal al marid al ladi yastuti al siyam." مع مشقة يسيرة مشقة يسيرة تصاحب. He said, but now the person who's sick, he's sick, but he can fast. She's sick, but she can fast, and it will be some light difficulty upon them. If they fast, their their fasting will be accompanied with some minor difficulty. It's a minor difficulty, right? The question is, هل الأفضل له الصيام أم الفطر? He said, the question is, is it better for them to fast or to break their fast? Is it better for them to fast or break their fast? Mind you, this scenario, a person, they're sick. They're sick with a sickness that if they fast with it, it'll bring some discomfort. Some discomfort. Now, some slight discomfort. So for a person like this, is it better for them to fast or to break their fast? Which one is it? The Sheikh says, Al Jawab, the answer, Afdal Lahu is better for this person in this scenario, Al Siyam, to fast. In this scenario, where fasting is accompanied with some minor difficulties, then it's better for this individual to fast, to fast. Naam. The Sheikh says, Wala shak. أن نفس السؤال أيضا للمسافر. He said, no doubt, the same question could be posed to the person who's traveling. He's traveling, and he can fast while traveling, and it will bring some minor discomfort. Then, in that case, it's better for them to what? To fast. To fast. نعم. هل الأفضل للمسافر الصوم أو فطر? He said another question: Is it better for the person? Who is traveling? Is it better for him to fast, or is it better for him to break his fast? He said, "Jawab, the answer. هذا خلاف بين أهل العلم." He said, "This is a point of differing between the people of knowledge. There's a difference of opinion as it relates to this. For men whom men you fadlu هذا, or men whom men you fadlu هذا." He said, "You have from amongst them." Those who say that this is better, and you have from amongst them those who say that that is better, meaning you have from amongst them those who say it's better to fast, and you have from amongst them those who say no, it's better to break your fast. Now, so there you have some difference of opinion. Walakin, he said, but however, هذا خلاف ما عدم وجود المشقة فإن وجد المشقة فإنه حين إذا يكون الأفضل الفطر بدون خلاف. He said, but. This is in the, he said, but if there is a difficulty, right? Not, not a slight inconvenience or a slight, uh, yeah, any, uh, difficulty, but if there's a difficulty, a difficulty, not, not a little bit, not a little inconvenience, but there's a major difficulty, but if there's a difficulty, major, right? Then, in such case, they must, it's better for them, or in such case, they must break their fast. Or in such case, it's better for them to break their fast. Now, so if there is difficulty, Right, they have a difficulty. Then, in that case, it's better for them to break their fast. In that case, it's better for them to break their fast. That is, if there's a difficulty. If there is an extreme difficulty, if there is an extreme difficulty, the person is starting to feel signs of, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a yeah, heat stroke or you know something like this. Right? They, uh, they, you know, they, they, they feel like they're gonna pass out and. So on and so forth. Then, in such case, a person has to break his fast. He has to break his fast. Is 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 he must break his fast, right? If if the difficulty is severe, then they they don't have a choice. They can't fast. They have to break their fast. As the Prophet said, "Let me say, Lisa, Lisa, al-bir al-suyam fi safar, 
that it is al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that is not from righteousness to fast while traveling. Now it's not from righteousness to fast while traveling. Meaning that what? If a person is, is suffering, he's traveling and he's suffering, then it's not righteous to put yourself through that, huh? By fact, by continuing to fast while you're traveling. That this is not a sign of righteousness. It's not a sign of righteousness. Naam. So for the, such a person who is suffering while he's traveling, uh, due to him fasting, then they have to break their fast. They have to break their fast. Okay? So let's go over that again. If a person is traveling and there's no difficulty upon them, none whatsoever, they can still break their fast. Right? But the question is, what's better? Some of the early mass say it's better to break your fast. Others from the early mass say, no, it's better to fast. So there's a point of difference on that point. If there is a difficulty, if there's a difficulty, right, then it is better for them. We're not talking some slight inconvenience, but if there's a difficulty, then, it, then what's better? It's better they break the fast. If there's a difficulty, it's better they break the fast. If it is an extreme difficulty, if it is an extreme difficulty and the person is suffering because he's fasting and traveling, then in such case, the person is not allowed to fast. They must break their fast. They no longer have the option fast, yay or nay. Now they must break their fast. Now, it makes sense? Like, the Shaykh says, وَأَمَّا musafir, The one who is traveling. فَيُبَاحُ لَهُ الْفِطْرِ He could fast. Or he can break his fast, excuse me. The one who is traveling is permissible for him to break his fast. It's permissible for him to break his fast. وَالسَّفَرْ أَلَّذِي يُبَاحُ فِيهِ الْفِطْرِ هُوَ السَّفَرْ أَلَّذِي يُبَاحُ فِيهِ الْقَصْرِ الْقَصْرِ وَالْجَمْعِ He said the, the type of traveling that a person is allotted the allowance to break their fast therein is the same travel where a person is allowed to shorten and combine their prayers therein. Okay? So anytime that you travel far enough where you can shorten and combine your prayers, then such is the distance that you can break your fast. You can break your fast as well. For you? Wahua. But what is this distance? Huh. What is his distance? The Shaykh he mentions, وَهُوَ مُخْتَلِفٌ فِيهِ بَيْنَ الْفُقَهَاءِ He said, but this distance, the, the, the scholars of Islamic jurisprudence, they differ. They differ as what is this exact distance. Now, uh, from them, the Shaykh he doesn't mention this, but from them, uh, Imam al-Albani, he mentions that the definition of what is the travel, it will go back to the customs of the people. And that is something that may change from time and place. That is something that may change for time and place, but it will go back to the customs uh, of the people. Uh, Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he gets into the, the actual distance and how that distance was um, calculated. Because see, some of the ulama, like, like, like Imam al-Bani, rahimahullah alayhi, he says there is no distance. There is no, there's no set distance, but it goes back to whatever the people uh, see. Uh, as, as being traveling it goes back to the customs of the people, what they see as being traveling. And that's what traveling is. And that may differ from time and place. So one era, one time, it may be, you know, from this point to that point, which, yeah, another era that's, you know, from point A to point B won't be considered traveling. So on and so forth. Now, so that may change from time to place. So you have from the early man, those who say there's no distance. You had others from the early man that say, no, there is a distance. Now, so it's important for us to know where did they extract this distance from? Where did they get these numbers from? And Alama Ahmed al Najmi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he goes over and he, and, he, and, he, and he extracts and shows us where they get these numbers from. He shows us where they get these numbers from, which is good because now we can understand better when we, when we, when we hear those ulama who say that there's a number and it is X amount of miles or X amount of kilos, how, it, how they derived that particular number. The Shaykh, he goes over it in brief. He mentions, he says, well, he goes on, he goes on to say, فَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ مَنْ يَرَى أَنَّ السَّفَرْ أَنَّ السَّفَرْ أَلَّذِي يَبَاحُ فِيهِ الْفِطْرِ يُبَاحُ فِيهِ قَصْرِ وَالْجَمْعِ He said that some of the ulama, they say that the traveling that allows a person to break his fast is the same 
as the travel that allows him to shorten and to combine his prayers. Wahua Makana Masafa Yomani Birjil. He said, and that is and it is a very important point. He said that is a day's distance or two days distance, right? He's gonna bring various opinions, so please, you know, um try to follow me. He said, and that is two days journey, two days journey by foot. Two days journey by foot. You understand what I'm saying? We're not saying two days journey, period, because depending on the mode of transportation, that yeah, you, you can go around the world and back. You know what I mean? Or almost, yeah. Depends on how fast your plane is or whatever. But you can go like, you know, so it's not just two days, like a 24 hour span, but how far you can get in two days if you walk there. How far you can get in two days if you walked. Right? Others from the ulama, they mention al yawm, wa layla, the rigid. They say no, it's how far you can get in a day or a night. In a day or a night. Walking. How far you can make it in a day and a night by walking, then this is the distance. And that's and, and, and based upon that, you know, uh calculations where they get the uh the numbers. The Shaykh he says, Well how that and where and where they get this from a person they say, Okay, or a day and a night, two days, okay, we met the lead, what's the proof? Where where are they getting that uh, this proof from? Right? What's what's the proof? Where are you getting these uh these these durations of time from? He said the wahada what are the riwaya fi hadith Abi Huraira. He said this comes as it comes in, in the narration from the from the hadith of Abi Huraira, Abu Huraira. La tu safir imra'atun masira tu thalatha ayyam illa ma'a di mahram is that a woman she's not allowed to travel the distance of three days except that she has with her uh uh afwan ma'a the Rahim, except that she has with her a mahram. Naam, except that she has with her a mahram. And if a person will to study all of these narrations, they find that there is a descending order, a descending order of the day of the of the days. Because one says three days, then another one says uh, 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 a day and a night. Then another one says she can't she can't travel. Period. So this is where they get these days from, right? Oh, this is. I mean, so when you when you when you see this, you realize what's not intended is the actual time frame itself but what is intended is that a woman she can't travel period without a mahram and this is what uh the ulama they mention when you bring all these narrations together now is that she can't travel yeah three days two days a day and a night no rather she can't travel at all you know it's how it's to be understood so anyway you have that narration and that, and that has been collected Akhraju ahmed has been collected by imam ahmed that mentioned three days but what are that Yom wa layla. And then there comes a hadith that's mutafaqun alayhi that mentions a day and a night. A day and a night, right? Because a day and a night, then that would, that would be what? A day, the, meaning when it's, when it's light outside and then night when it's dark outside. So on average, 12 and 12, 24 hour span. And then another one that comes, uh, it says, wa yom, a day. Now, then you have another narration that says, layla, a night time, right? Uh, it says a day, and another narration says a night time. He said in all of these narrations, you can find them in Sahihain. You can find them in Sahihain. Either both in, uh, either, either they're in both in Bukhari and Muslim, or, uh, one of the two. One of the two. Like the one that mentions, the one that mentions, uh, a day, then this is in Muslim. And the one that mentions a night, this is in Muslim. Right? Wait. But Hunaka, you also have another narration, right? And this adds to it a little bit, right? You have another narration. Wahiya Masafa Barid. Another narration that mentions, it actually mentions a set time frame. This narration, it actually mentions a set time frame, right? And, and that is a Barid. And we're going to go over how long is a Barid, right? Um, now with this narration, with this narration, the Shaykh mentions, the Shaykh mentions, he says, وَهَذِهِ riwaya وَرَدَتْ فِي سُنِنْ أَبِي Dawood. He said, in this narration, it comes inside of the sunan of Abu Dawood. وَفِي طَرِيقِهَا انْفَرَضْ بِهَا سُهَيْلْ إِبْنْ أَبِي صالح. He said, but in this narration, Suhail 
Ibn Abi Salih, he brings this alone. He brings this alone by itself. Wafihi kalam. And this, and this chain, it has some speech as relates to it. There's some criticism as relates to this chain of hadith. So in other words, this is the shaykh indicating to us that this hadith has been graded as being unauthentic by the ulama of hadith. So this is a hadith that is da'if. It's a weak hadith. It can't be used as a proof and evidence. And this is why those scholars who say that there is no set distance because there's no proof, this is why. They're not saying that there is not a hadith out there that mentions proof or that mentions the distance. They're saying there's no authentic hadith that can be attributed to the Prophet ﷺ that mentions distance. Because those are hadith that mention a specific distance, then what? They are not authentic. They are weak. So we can't use them as a proof or an evidence. Now, that makes sense? But yeah. The Shaykh, he says, for Hausli, he says, so basically the takeaway, Naam, أنه ينبغي أن نأخذ بأقل ما سمي سفرا. He says, so therefore, it's important that we just take the least, the least amount of distance that has been called a travel. And that's where they, the Ulema, they get the number from. That we take the least amount of distance that has been called a travel. Right? Um, taking all of these things in, in, taking all of these things into consideration, then the least amount of distance that is considered a travel or has been called a travel and labeled as a travel, then we'll take that. He says, and the lowest of this, the lowest of this will be the day by itself or night by itself. So when it's mentioned a day by itself, this doesn't mean a whole 24 hour period. But it means that that time of the day when the sun is out, right? That's the, that's, the, that's the least of the periods. When the sun is out. That time of the day when the sun is out. So you figure a 12-hour stretch. Now, he said, or you can say the nighttime, meaning that time of the day where the moon is out, right? So, again, on average, what? A 12-hour stretch. A 12-hour stretch. Now, with that 12-hour stretch, with Alika, Masafa, but Idain. That 12 hour stretch generally, and remember we're talking about traveling by foot. We're not talking about in a, in a, in a car, right? We're not talking about even in a scooter. You know, scooters, they, they don't go that fast. We're not talking about that. We're talking about traveling by foot, traveling by foot. So the Sheikh, he's mentioning that based on all of this, then that 12 hour period, uh, general, a person will be able by foot to travel, but he deigned. To Barid. And this is why he brought the narration of Barid. So when he comes with, yeah, this Baridain is not that far fetched from our minds. Okay, well, where did, where did he get Barid from? Because we have that, you have that hadith that's not authentic that mentions Barid. But in any event, a 12 hour period by foot, generally a person can, a person could cover two Barids, right? Baridain. He can cover two of them, right? Even, so a person say, okay, so what does that equate to? What is two Barid equal? In, in distance, what, what, what is that equal? The Shaykh says, إِذَنْ فَمَنْ سَافَرَ أَرْبَعِينَ كِيلُوا لَهُ أَنْ يُفْطَرَ وَيَقْصِرُ Whoever travels a Bidideen, which would be equivalent to 40 kilos, 40 kilos, right? Um, or kilometers, kilometers or whatever, right? Then that will, and then, then at that distance, they'll be able to break their fast and to shorten their prayers. They'll be able to break their fast and to shorten, uh, their prayers. Now, a person, he may say, okay, al done. You're talking about a measuring system that we don't use here in America. So what do you mean? Huh? Uh, a, a, a kilometer. What is that? What is a kilometer? I don't know what that is. Okay. So the shape, so yeah, they, they have here in the Hamish, they have here in the footnotes. That which breaks it down into a measuring system that we are more familiar with. 40 kilos equates to, uh, 24 miles. 40 kilos equates to 24 miles. Arba, wa'ishruna, milan. 24 miles. Okay? So 24 miles, okay? so 24 miles is generally what a person could do on foot in a 12 hour period. 24 miles. So anything outside of 24 miles, then 
يعني according to this extraction from the aforementioned proofs and evidences, the scholars say that a person they can uh, break their fast and they are allowed to shorten their prayers and to combine their prayers. Now again, we want to reiterate, this is for those ulama who mention a specific uh, uh, distance and this is where they got that distance. Now, this is where they got that distance for those ulama who mention a specific distance. Remember, you have from the ulama those who say there is no distance because we, we don't have anything that's authentic that specifically mentions a distance and that everything that specifically mentions a distance is not authentic. So therefore, we can't rely upon a specifically mentioned distance. So therefore, travel, it will be that which the people consider as being traveling. And that may change from time and place. And as we mentioned, from those ulama who held the lights of this opinion was uh, uh, Imam al-Albani, rahmatullah alayhi. Imam al-Albani, rahmatullah alayhi. That there is no set distance, but whatever the people see is traveling, and that's traveling. And that may change from time and place. That may change in time and place. And then he mentioned... Rahmatullah that there was a there were there were two points that was inside of uh, of of Dimashq, if I remember correctly, that in the time of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions in his writings that they used to consider that to be traveling. That if you went from that 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 city to the other city, then that was a traveling. Now at the time, the Shaykh, if I'm not mistaken, was living in Syria. He was living in Dimashq. And he asked the people in the, in the crowd, because the, the places were still the same names, they were still the same two towns. He asked them, is going from this town to that town, does anyone ever see that as being traveling right now? And everyone in the crowd said, no, 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 no one saw that as traveling. And the Shaykh, he used that to show that, yes, this is, this is the, you know, the, the point of reference that some of these rulings change from time to place. So because when it goes back to the order of the people, the customs of the people, that may change from time and place. So it's no set distance. It's whatever the people see it as being. So in the time of Sheikh al-Islam and Taymiyyah, that was a travel. But in the time of Sheikh al-Bani, which was in our time, now, nah, then this is not considered a, a travel from this place to, to that, to that uh, place. So this, this is what the ulama, they mention as relates to the distance as, as, uh, as relates to, uh, to traveling. Now, nah. The Shaykh he says, وَقَدْ يَرِدُ سُؤَالٌ He said, but then there can come a question. Then there can come a question. That question is, مَاذَا وَقَدْ أَصْبَحَ السَّفَرَ الْيَوْمِ خِلَافِ السَّفَرَ فِي ذَلِكَ الْوَقْتِ He said, okay, but what is the issue now where يعني, traveling now is not like traveling then. It's not the same. In other words, a person may say, I understand back then, going from here to there, uh, being allowed to break your fast because it was hard to travel back then if you had to travel on the back of an animal right um it was hard whether that was a, a whether that was a camel or that was a horse or that was a mule or that was a donkey it was difficult whether you had uh yeah a horse and carriage or not yeah and it, it was it was it was a lot harder it's a lot harder to do that now I'm, so now, let alone, of course, if you're traveling by foot, then, you know, of course, that's, that's even harder. That's even harder than having, you know, a, a riding animal. So, of course, that's very difficult. He said, but what about if a person were to say, well, it's not hard like that anymore. Now we have cars, we have AC, we have trains, we have boats, we have, you know, um, airplanes, you know, that are very comfortable and so on and so forth. So traveling now is not like it was traveling back then. So, so, um, so what about that? What about that? Is that to be taken into consideration? So that even if, you know, if a person is traveling in, in, in first class lap of luxury, uh, then are we to say he cannot break his fast? We're not getting it again. We're not speaking about what is better and what's not better, right? We're talking about it's not permissible for him to break his fast now because he's, you know, he's reclining in a first class seat under air condition, relaxing. No, he can still break his fast. He still has the allowance to break his fast. The early man they mentioned, well, let's, 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 let's Let's look at what uh, what the Sheikh he said first, and then we mention what others from the early Ma'af said. The Sheikh he mentioned, he says, Al-Ijaba, the answer to this, Naqul, we say, Hada Sahih, he said, you're right, this is true. Traveling now is not like it was traveling then. That's true. He said, but also, Wa hadha min ni'matillah, Azza wa Jal. He said, but this is, for, this is from the bounties of Allah, Azza wa Jal. This is from the bounties. This is from the bounties. This is a gift from Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Na'am. وَلَمَّا سُئِلَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, and when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Look, look how the Shaykh, and he extracts this. Yeah? 
Look how the Shaykh he extracts his understanding. You see his delil. He said, because when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked, yani an al-qasr fil khawf, when he was asked about the shortening of the prayer when, yani, uh, in in a time of fear, now wa qad dhahab al khawf, and he was asked about this once the time of fear was gone. So in the time of fear, we're allowed to, to shorten the prayer, right? But so, so then they asked, what, yani, once the fear had left and it was safety, uh, what about now? Is that now thus abrogated because there's safety now? فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said صدقة تصدق الله بها عليكم he said this is a charity this is يعني a charity صدقة that Allah Taala has given you فقبلوا صدقته he said so therefore take his charity this is a gift يعني it's a gift Allah has given you so take his gift take it and this hadith has been أخرجه مسلم has been collected by Muslim نعم so even though even though a person is in, you know, first class, lap of luxury, no problem, in the best, you know, in the best part of the, the train and, you know, and very comfortable and so on and so forth. Still, he is allowed to break his fast. He's allowed to break his fast. He still has the allowance. Still, he'll just make the day up later after Ramadan. Okay. Others from the ulama, they mention, they mention a good point as well. They said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who had legislated that the person who's traveling could break their fast, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that the modes of transportation, they will change. Allah knew that. Allah knows that, right? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this allowance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that there will come a day that there will be planes. There will come a day there will be trains, right? There will come a day there will be helicopters, and you know whatever the case is, right? And with that, Allah still gave that allowance that a person he can who's traveling can break can break his fast still. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He knows what modes of transportation will be in the future, inshallah Taala, which you know maybe even more comfortable. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He knows what will be in the future, and then with that He still has given the allowance for us to what to break our fast when we are traveling, even if. Even if it's no problem, it's, you know, it's not difficult or anything, still, we can still break it. It's okay. We have the allowance to break it still. It's okay. So this is something that's important, uh, to mention, uh, and, and, and the like. And it's a must that for those who are in need to take the allowance, you take the allowance and that we take the allowance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has, He has given us and that we do not put any unnecessary difficulties upon ourselves and that definitely we do not fall into anything that uh, it, it would be uh, not permitted due to us putting a burden on ourselves at a time where we are not allowed to do so, as in the aforementioned cases of a person who has a tremendously severe sickness of which fasting will be very, very, very difficult upon him and it will worsen his sickness and it will make him worse and he will harm himself by fasting, then this person, he cannot fast. Or in the case where you have one or two reliable Muslim doctors who tell a person that if they were to fast, it will be a detriment to their sickness and it will increase their sickness. This person is not allowed to fast, even though they, they, they may think they're strong enough. If the medical professionals who are trustworthy Muslims say, no, you're not, it's going to hurt you, then they are not allowed to fast. They have to break their fast. So for a person in such situations to say they're going to fast is not good. Likewise, for the man who or the woman who's traveling and the fast has become extremely difficult upon them, where they feel they may suffer from a heat stroke and they may pass out and things like this, it's not permissible for them to fast. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, of suyan fi safar al kamaqal in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is not from righteousness to fast while traveling. So in such cases, no, you're not allowed to fast. You have to break your fast. So it's important that we know when we can and can't uh, you know, what we can do and when we can do it and when we are not allowed to do things and under what circumstances are we not allowed uh, to do it. And this is you know, uh, what we had prepared to mention about these two points taken from this ayah here in Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah and, and that uh, as it comes in ayah 200, uh, excuse me, in ayah 184 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Ayah 184 from Surah Al-Baqarah, that first portion of the ayah. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, we'll leave that as there.
wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khayra